Well, good afternoon, Grace Point family. It's an honor to be back with you with these little five minute devotions. Sometimes they go a little over, I guess, but we're trying to keep them to five minutes. I'm so honored that you join us today. Please share this with your friends on Facebook and various other ways on social media. I wanna share a word today from God's word out of Ephesians chapter two. And uh, really here's the question for the day. How big is your God? How big is your God? Uh, you ask some people today, they think that God's an old man who's stopped a long time ago caring about this world, that he's disconnected and he doesn't really care about what we're doing. That would be so wrong. When I was a little boy, I used to brag all the time about how my dad was Superman. He was stronger than anybody else, made more money than everybody else. I bragged on him all the time. And the reality is our God is, is very big. He holds the whole world right in the palm of his hand. This text talks about a few of those things. Let's talk about them this morning or this afternoon. The first thing I, I wanted to share with you, he's big enough to deliver us from the penalty of our sin. In Ephesians chapter 2, listen to these words. It says, And you were dead in your trespasses and sins, in which you formerly walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, of the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. He has the power to deliver us from the penalty of sin. Now I'll just walk through this little first part of these nine verses and give you some examples. First of all, in the first three verses, he gives us a description of what this really looks like, a description of what it's like to be outside of Christ. And so he uses words like these. In verse 1 and verse 5, he says, we are d dead in our trespasses and sins. In verse 2, he says, we walked according to this world's standards instead of his standards. And in verse 3, it talks about we lived according to the lust of the flesh instead of the desires of his spirit. And so that's what it's like to be outside of Christ. We're dead in our trespasses and our sins. But the great news is this, he then gives us a declaration of our state, what it's like to be in Christ. And that starts in verse four. Listen to what he says in verse four. He says, but God being rich in mercy because of his great love, uh, love with which he loved us. And so the first thing he tells us that he loves us. You need to know that he loves you. In verse five, he says that we're made all together in Christ which is an awesome thing. We've made alive together with him in Christ. In verse six, verse six, he says, he raised us up with Christ. We've been delivered from death because of Christ. In verse seven, he talks about the surpassing riches of his grace that he extended toward us through his mercy on the cross. And then these verses that are known so well in Ephesians two, verses eight and nine, it says, for by grace, you have been saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not as a result of work. So no one, may boast and so the whole thing is here again our god is a gigantic god he has the ability to deliver us even from the penalty of our sin the second thing is he's big enough to divinely and divinely use us passionately in his ministry and of course verse 10 we always leave out it says for we're his workmanship in christ jesus to do good works which he preordained for us to do before we walked in them and so he knew before the foundations of this earth who we were, what we needed, and he can even use us after he saves us in his vineyard. And I've said things like this before. And I just want to share this with good works are not the price of salvation. They're the proof of salvation. In other words, we don't work, this text tells us, we don't work so that we might be saved. We work because we have been saved. The motive is entirely different. So our God is big enough to divinely, passionately use us in his ministry. What a wonderful thing that is. And then the final thing I want to share with you is he's big enough to develop a close personal relationship with every one of us. I don't understand that. I don't know why God wants to have a personal relationship with me, but the Bible says he absolutely does. And so he talks about a couple things here. I want to just share them with you. The first thing he did was he, he took a look back. And in verse 11 and in verse 12, he uses the word remember. He says, therefore, remember that the form, formerly you Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by the so-called circumcision by which it is performed in the flesh by human hands. And then he says in verse 12, remember that you were at that time separate from Christ, excluded from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in this world. And so he describes again, he looks back on his life and remembers what it was like to be outside of Christ, not to know salvation, not to know the Lord in a personal relationship, but he doesn't end there. He second of all, doesn't just look back, he looks forward and in verse 13, he says this, but now, I love that, but now in Christ, you, you who formerly were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. How big is your God? Honestly, how big is, does he really hold the whole world in the palm of his hand? I believe he does. And he certainly has the power to deliver us from the penalty of our sin, to use us in his work. And finally, 
He wants to have a personal relationship with you. He's big enough to make all of that happen. So I want to remind you today, folks, you're worshiping a great big God who can handle any situation we ever face. He's greater than anything you will ever face. Praise God, he's a big God. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for these times in your word. Thank you, God, for those that are listening. I pray your blessings on their lives. I thank you, God, that we have this opportunity weekly just to spend time in your word. Bless, Father, everything we talked about. May we be reminded today how big you really are. Father, our nation needs you like they perhaps never have. Our leaders need you, Father. Give wisdom to our leaders. Please surround our church with uh, angels of mercy and protection, God, and protect our body. And until we're able to be together again soon, Father, I pray you'd watch over our lives. We love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. See you next time.